Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this video lesson, we will be continuing our look at Tartan's Chapter 7, which is Capital Cost Estimates, and we will specifically be looking at materials of construction and just a brief discussion on how we make those choices. So we've been looking at ways of estimating costs for equipment, and we've seen that as you change materials, the cost of the equipment can change rather dramatically. So how do you make the decision about which material you should use? Now, in your textbook, Table 7-9 has a basic guide, but also you can look in a lot of other places. I mean, Perry's is a great source if you haven't been going to Perry's Handbook for Chemical Engineers, you really should be. Um, but also in this particular category, manufacturers are going to have good equipment posted on their websites. It's in their best interest to keep that information as correct as possible. If they are guiding you to spend more money than is necessary, you're not going to make purchases from that company. And if they are suggesting that you buy things that won't last, you're not going to make purchases from them again either. So therefore, it's in their best interest to have the correct information on the equipment and materials for your applications. Now, the table in your book is much like any other table I've seen. They all use a variation on this. But basically, they use letter grades, okay? In this case, A is good, B is okay. C is getting pretty marginal, and N just means no, okay? Now, this table does not include temperature information, and temperature frequently impacts the choice. So this is just a first guide, but it's a good place to start. So let's just look at the table. So this is page one of this table, and what you're seeing is a list of chemical compounds, and it's not a very complete list, which is why you need these other resources. But for a particular chemical, so say acetaldehyde up here at the top, it says N under carbon steel. So don't do carbon steel. But you get an A rating with 316 stainless, Hastelloy C, titanium, TFE, and graphite. You get a C rating with brass, and you don't have entries for some of these others. Okay? Now, if there's not an entry, it doesn't mean, oh, good, it's just fine, I'll use that. That means that they haven't evaluated it, so you shouldn't trust that it would be acceptable. Okay? Uh, do a little bit more research if you're wanting to use, say, 304 stainless. Now, in general, this table is set up so that these on this side are fairly cheap, and we just get more and more dollar signs as we move across the table. Okay, so that's going to be sort of your general guideline. So you're going to kind of, when possible, choose something as far to the left as is reasonable and go for an A rating if you can. Bs aren't bad. I generally don't do Cs unless I know that it's going to be just like occasional use, in which case, yeah, all right, I can make sure to clean it and refurbish it every time in between. So I have some flexibility there. Now you're going to notice that some of these are going to be a little bit tougher to find, okay? Uh, so for instance, the HCL here, and that was not the line I wanted, let me, here. There we go. Okay, so dilute hydrochloric acid it's a no on almost all of these. You finally at copper and monel start seeing C ratings. It isn't until you get to TFE and graphite 
that you finally get to A ratings. So TFE is gonna be Teflon, so you're gonna line your material with Teflon for these dilute acids, okay? Or you can use graphite. And you're gonna see several of these that are gonna be kind of like, whoa, there's not many choices, okay? Um, there is another page to this table. Let me just quickly show you that one. So it comes on down to, you know, many other things. But always on the acids, there's always like a weak and a strong version because they're going to have very different characteristics as you go from weak to strong acid. Um, when you, oh, one other thing I need to mention. Okay, so we have two types of stainless steel here. When you go looking at the uh, appendix, they are not going to identify them separately. Okay, if you call a vendor, they're gonna price them separately, but the book is not going to price them separately. Um, so these are just gonna be stainless steels. These are gonna be nickel-based metals, okay? Uh, the specifics of those is kind of a little bit beyond what I wanna do in this lesson here. But anyway, so some of these, when you look them up and start doing the pricing, you're gonna find that it doesn't exactly match this table. But they will have the carbon steel, this whole group is gonna be stainless steel, aluminum, copper, brass, those are normal. These are gonna be your nickel alloys. Titanium shows up back there. I don't think they have Teflon and graphite on very many of the items in our appendix. But anyway, so just a little introduction to materials of construction. Our next lessons will be coming out of chapter eight. We will be looking at uh, some of the other costs, the operating costs for our plants once we've built them. Thank you very much for your time.